Hello, friends! Welcome to the second part of our Skin Gen Masterclass tutorial series in Character Creator. We're using some fancy new texture enhancement tools here. If you didn't catch the first video and you want to catch up, the link to that one will be in the description. Who would have thought? Let's get to it! Check out this guy's cool body art. I'm going to teach you some methods to use when generating full body textures like this, in this case for a cool, demonic, semi-realistic kind of character. We're going to take advantage of the UDIMS UV system that's implemented in the CC3 Plus models, and we're going to take advantage of our direct link to Substance Painter as well. I made these cool horns in ZBrush, and I gave them a majestic hairstyle, some flowing locks. At this stage, I recommend just using ambient occlusion and normal maps in CC3, and we can add the rest of the textures later in Substance. We're going to export our model for texturing. To do this, we select all of our scene objects and we press the Substance button at the top right. Then we select the Export option and look for a place for these files to live on our computer and we give them a home. And we give them a name like Al Reed and save. We'll get a little confirmation window. Once in Substance, we click on File and select New. And then we select the template that we just kind of exported out. This is our I'll Read guy that we just made. We leave the normal map format in OpenGL, and we want Use UV Tile Workflow to be active. And we want the Preserve UV Tile box to be checked as well. Now we go Add to add the main textures. Our boy Al Reed is Al Reedy waiting for us. Hey yo! And we look for the folder named STD Skin Head. In there, we only want the diffuse, the normal maps, and the roughness maps for now of each of the different body parts that comprise our mesh. Also, I'll add the textures that we have for the horns and for the hair, and I'll add the maps that I've got for each of those objects as well. With all of our resources laid out, we can go here to the, to the side and we'll find the Project tab. That's where we've got all of our textures listed. We can check out the Texture Set List, the Object Layout and the Materials, and we can see the UDIM system is giving us a four-digit number for each UV in the model. When the geometry of a model has more than one UV, as is the case with our mesh here, we can see that they're stacked one under the other according to its corresponding material. So to get a better picture of it, from the Layers panel, we can add a new Fill layer. And from there, you can see right next to the layer name, you've got a little thumbnail generated. If you click on it, you'll see the six UV tiles listed in the Properties tab. The fill layer here is going to act as a sort of mask. We'll, we'll deactivate all but Tile 1001, and check it out. You can see where each UV that makes up the model is located. Next, we'll go back to the color fill and in the properties, we deactivate everything except the color. And from the project tab, you click and drag the head color diffuse base texture there and you put it in this spot here and everything should look like this, yay. Now we're gonna repeat the process with the UV for the body, the torso. We create a fill layer we deactivate all the UVs except for 1002, that's the one for the body. And again, from the Properties tab, we deactivate everything except the base color and put the texture in its place. At this point, let's get crazy here, man. I recommend assigning the corresponding name to each layer. I know, I'm a madman. And you just do this again and again until all your stuff is in. Once the textures are in place, I recommend grouping them into a folder and assigning them a really nice name, something spicy, like base color. Or you can name your Steve if you want, I don't know. For the normal maps, it's the exact same process, my friend. Uh, the only difference is that for the normal map, you unselect everything except for the NRM box. That's the NERM box for us. You're gonna make fill layers and select the correct UV tiles again and put each map in its corresponding place. And, you know, it's sort of meditative. It's zen. It's the same process with every item. And I know what you're thinking. You're saying, yeah, I want to do this with roughness maps as well. Well, you're in luck, bub, because that's exactly what you get to do. Once you're done having fun with that, 
Click on Bake Mesh Maps, and we want to raise the resolution to 4096. Come on, this is 2020, we need 4K, man. Deactivate everything except STD skin head material. From common, we leave active the normal, world space, curvature, position, and thickness. And we make sure that the curvature is generated from the geometry. And we press bake. For the hair as well as the horns, we can take advantage of the textures that I already made previously. Next, we go to the Smart Materials tab, and we add uh, any of them, doesn't matter. In my specific case, I'm looking for a pale skin tone, but something a little ominous. And we can adjust the color to taste and really bring out his malevolence. Once you're done contemplating colors and the meaning of life, you can kind of have this order as follows. The initial base coat color here, and the dark base skin layer at about 90% opacity, then the normal map folder, then a layer of shadows you've applied with a brush, and on top of that, the roughness. Next up would be something like the eyebrows. I recommend using a brush with a, a really well-defined height to give them some punch, and we have details above that, like a lip contour, nail material, and shadow to give depth to the eyes. Speaking of the eyes, I recommend importing the texture for the eyes to the cornea. It's just nice to have it there as a reference. It gives them a bit more soul. Now, we want to change the opacity of the eyelashes. So, we go to the shader settings. We replace the one that comes by default to one that has transparency, like this metal one. Then, we add a new opacity channel. And you can add the eyelash textures there, the same way you add any other textures. Let's add some details. It's time for the fireworks, the razzmatazz, the show, the jazz hands, you know? On the same layer, because this is our transparent layer, we drag a material with a little brightness. The color doesn't matter. And then we activate symmetry. And with a hard brush, using a smallish size, we can make freehand strokes on different parts of the body. Starting with the chin, the idea is to generate very self-similar and simple abstract figures. Uh, since our boy Al Reed here is a demon, I'm assuming he's got these demonic tribal glyphs inscribed on him as some sort of dark art or magic. Above the eyebrows, I'm just highlighting the curve of the bone and exaggerating the expression that's already there. Now, you give it a little color, a little, a little texture. But most importantly, you want to increase the height. You want to make it stand out a bit. One of the ideas I had for this guy was that these markings would sort of look like tattoos, but also sort of like scarification marks, which are branded on and burned into the skin rather than just inked onto the skin. But I wanted the tattoos to look healed. Painting on a figure in this way is really useful. You don't have to worry about crossing over different UVs. It all just works out. The program takes care of it. You can be happy. The, the part that we're doing right now is to draw it and kind of color it in Substance Painter, and then you can adjust the final details in Skin Gem. That'll be really cool. Right now, uh, I'm just repeating the process again with a figure that covers uh, his nice big pectoral muscles, uh, the left shoulder, part of the arm, and part of the back. A really cool pro tip is that we can duplicate this exact tattoo layer and assign white to the designs, then black to the body. And then we can bake that as a mask to use inside Skin Gen, because uh, you know how the masks are black and white. Hey, pretty cool, huh? Now, let's do some body painting, yeah! With a fill layer, let's make a cool spiral design. His, his uh, left side is kind of scarred tattoo, and his right side is ceremonial paint. A nice, simple blue. Maybe his acolytes have to paint him before he does demonic stuff. Imagine being one of those guys. He's like, paint my body. And then they have to do that. They like kneel down and kind of rub his body with paint. That'd be a really weird job. Once you're done painting your demon like a good acolyte, Make a duplicate with black and white for the mask. For my finishing touch, my coup de grace, so to speak, I draw the lines around the eyes. I make him look like his evil mascara has been running, like he's been crying, tears from being too evil. It's looking good. Are you happy? I'm happy. This guy looks great. Next, we export the textures from the menu. We define the path in our project folder. 
we assign a resolution of 4096 because we need that 4K and we select the character creator preset. If you don't have that, uh, you got to go install that from the Reillusion forums. For the global settings, we just leave selected all the stuff we were texturing. Hooray! Huzzah! Back in Character Creator from the File menu, check out your fancy Substance Painter Pipeline button, and you, you press that button, because that's a good button, and select Update Textures. You just have to select the folder you just created by exporting from Substance, and after a few seconds, we can see that everything is here. You can check the normals, you can adjust the colors, uh, you can maybe flip some normal Ys like I like to do, you know how it is. But that's all for this video. In the next one, we'll get even crazier. Thanks for watching.